Hello, um, several people have asked me to do a tutorial, which I've never done before. Uh, they've asked me to do John Riley, which is off my album Up The Cut. Um, I'll be absolutely honest, I don't know how to teach people how to play the guitar. Uh, I taught myself, so I'm slightly uh, confused about how to do this, but let's see how it gets on. To start with, John Riley, Up The Cut album, it's uh, in a C, G, C, G, C, D tuning. Uh, and I've got a capo on the second fret. Um, I'm going to refer from here on in to frets as in the number of frets above the capo. So if I'm playing the fifth fret, that means the fifth fret above the capo. It's actually the seventh fret on the guitar, but let's just pretend that the guitar starts here, shall we? So, John Riley starts with um, uh, a harmonic, uh, just a sort of bright sound to wake the, the listener up. Um, and I do that with a open first string, and then from the third string upwards, uh, I'm, I've got a harmonic on that fifth fret. So, there you go. Easy beginning. Um, straight away go into the song and I use my ring finger and my little finger to start. Seventh fret, I'm on the third and the fourth string. And uh, I usually keep um, the, the fifth string open as a sort of ringing drone sound uh, on that chord. So you get that sound. And I take from the from the seventh fret and going down to the fifth fret, just sliding down there. So, so from the beginning, next one, first ring, first finger is my fourth finger. That sounds so strange. My first finger, my forefinger, not my fourth finger, my forefinger. Uh, on the on the one two third string fourth fret, uh, and then I'm doing the fifth, uh, the fourth and the fifth strings open to create that beautiful sounding chord there. So I'm sliding down from the seventh with my ring and my little finger, first finger, third string fourth fret to create that chord. Now next bit. I've got my middle finger, forefinger, uh, and I'm creating a chord with my middle finger on the fifth fret of the second string, uh, and my first finger should still be there from the previous note on the third string, fourth fret. Then I'm going to slide up. Ring fingers, uh, sorry, middle fingers going up to the seventh fret, first finger up to the fifth fret, still on the same string. So we're still just on the uh, on the second and third strings there. So, oh, got that wrong myself. How's that? Next bit, two open strings, fourth and, sorry, third and fourth. Two on there, and then we're gonna create this chord here with, again with my first finger, my fourth finger on the, on the uh, fourth fret, third string. I usually use my ring finger here on the fifth fret, uh, on the fourth string. So you get that. So once again. Okay, next phrase. I'm going to create uh, this lovely minor chord. So we're doing that with an open second string. First finger on the second fret, third string ring finger on the fourth string, third fret. So. And now, we've most of that first part's been made up of blocks of chords, but from here on in, it sort of slightly goes into uh, single notes. Uh, so I'm going to, from that chord, I'm pulling off the ring finger onto um, the first finger, which is sort of hiding underneath on that uh, second fret, fourth string. Can you see that? 
uh, then plucking the uh, the finger, the forefinger, which is uh, that sorry, it's that annoying sound again. The fourth, <laughs> the forefinger. Let's just call it the first finger from here on in. Anyway, pulling off onto that first finger, which should already be sitting there on the second fret of the third string. So. Okay, and then my little finger comes into play, first time in a while. Uh, that's going up to the fifth fret on the third string. And I usually hammer on to get that. Now, to resolve this little phrase, that gorgeous uh, chunky chord down there, really full of texture, You've got the first and second string strings open, and then the first finger on the fourth fret, uh, on, on the third string. So I broke my own rule then, didn't I? I tried to use my ring finger when it should have been the little finger, so let's do that again. See that? That gets a little bit complicated. There's a little bit of twiddly stuff going on. Instead of finishing on that note, it rolls off. So, and the way that I do this is, if you've already got those uh, bottom two strings sort of rumbling away as a kind of a, a drone in the background from the previous chord. I'll show you what this should sound like and then I'll take you th through it. Do that again. So the way that I'm doing it, you've had that little bit. First finger, this is going to use the first finger and it's going to use the second finger a lot. So first finger starts on the fourth fret, third string. You're hammering on and pulling off with your middle finger on the fifth fret. This is all on the third string. And then from that, you're pulling off onto an open third string open second string, and then first finger, fourth fret, middle finger, fifth fret. Got that? Good idea to hit the, um, the, the open first string when you reach that final note as well. It gives it a bit of bump. So you're going, that sometimes I'm, I'm hitting that uh, that fifth fret with my ring finger or my little finger, whatever feels comfortable for you, really. Okay, I'm going to play the next little bit for you so you can hear what we're aiming at. And just to remind myself how, do, how I do it. So... that is um, you you were on that note from the previous phrase I slide down from there and then sort of slide back up so I'm sliding down to about the second fret this is on the second string and then I'm sliding back up I kind of imagine it almost as the sound of a tape machine an old tape machine pressing stop mm -hmm. pressing start mm -hmm. so And it's um, there's a kind of there's a, there's a lot of uh, emphasis around um, sort of holding on to notes in this sort of part of the song. Uh, it's all about trying to find tension. It's all about um, letting the song breathe. That's quite important. So you can l allow that slide and that slide back up to last as long as you like, really. <laughs> So what I'm doing is, this is all single notes, I don't have any drones going on. Uh, I'm going, sliding back to the fifth. Uh, I'm using my uh, middle finger to do that. Fifth, uh, second, second string, fifth fret. First finger, fourth fret on the third string. 
middle finger, fifth fret, same string, open fourth string, and then two notes on uh, with your first finger on the uh, on the fourth string, fourth fret. On the second of those notes, I'm putting in that bottom string open again. It, it creates this lovely resonance, this kind of lovely tension. And that's one of the notes that you can hold on to for as long as you like uh, to give it more, yeah, well, tension's the best word for it. So. Personally, I just love that. I love playing that. We're gonna have one of those little folky twiddles. We've had one before, first, uh, first finger and uh, middle finger, fourth fret and fifth fret, and we're on the, on the fourth string here, and we've got that drone going on in the background, so. And I'm pulling off to an empty fourth string. I'm just going to take us through where we've got to so far and then I'll introduce you to those little bits. So we had... So this bit, we've just done that bit. pull off that we talked about before is going down to an open so after you've had your open fourth string you're doing an open uh, third string and then I'm using my middle finger same string so third string fourth fret ring finger fifth fret open fourth string first finger second fret on the fourth string and then we're resolving that little phrase on that minor chord that we had earlier. You see that? So you've got your open second, you've got your second fret, first finger, uh, third string, third fret, fourth string, which I'm using my ring finger for. So I'll just play that. And actually I resolved that chord thinking about it. Get all those notes in there. So those top two are, are, are just open strings. You can put them in if you want, but. Then I do the phrase again. This is a funny thing that happens when you play a song a lot. When I recorded this song, it kind of just stops there. But the more that I play it live, the more I've been finding that I'm adding little bits in. So actually what I'm doing there, this is on the second run through, through this little twiddle. I'm just playing. Um, just holding that, that that chord with those two top open strings and I'm plucking the third and the fifth string and then the fourth and the sixth string as chords every now and again so first time through If you listening to the album version doesn't really have that, but when if you've seen me doing it live, I sometimes throw those ones in. Then we go back to the beginning of the of the song, uh, excluding the harmonics set section to to finish up the phrase. Not 
going to take you through that bit because we've already done it. It's just an exact repeat, but it cuts off before that tape machine slide thing that I talked about. So I'm going to play you through all of that and we'll see how you get on. it's a large part of what the song itself is so I'm going to take you through how to sing a verse but really after that it's just a case of alternating between the verse and the introduction you can throw the introduction in between verses where you like to be honest I don't have a formula for when I do that when I play it live on the record of course it was like first or second take and it's just how it turned out at that particular point it's not like it's arranged to have the intro repeat after the after the second verse and then the fourth verse or anything like that, just put it where you feel is comfortable. Here's how I do the verse. So you, you will remember from the beginning I was sliding down using um, the seventh fret using those two notes. When I'm singing the verse, I don't tend to have that slightly interesting chord in there because I'm not trying, I don't want to overcomplicate what's, what's being fed into the ear. So I do have that open fifth string to, to resonate. I, there I use my little finger, sometimes I use my ring finger, going down from the seventh fret to the fifth fret on the third string. first finger on the fourth fret uh, on the third string and then uh, middle finger fifth fret on the second string little finger seventh fret second string first finger fourth fret third string middle finger fifth fret third string and then up to your little finger on the seventh fret on that third string what I'm really doing is I'm following the melody so I'll show you what I do John Riley was a true love's name. Oh, that was wrong. John Riley is a true love's name. And I do that quite a lot. When I get to the honest man and she, the second line. So what I've got there is you've got almost a power chord shape. First finger, second string, third fret and uh, little finger, fifth fret, third string. So you've got that going on. And I'm rolling the fingers up across empty strings, right up, uh, right up through to the sixth string underneath. Uh, and that's on each note. Then, I'm keeping my little finger where it was, but my uh, middle finger's moving up to the fourth fret on the second string. So really you're having this sound. That interesting little chord. That last one there, I've got my ring finger on the second fret, fifth, uh, second string fifth fret, sorry. rolling sort of open strings around it, uh, which is optional if you want to do it. John Riley was a true love's name, an honest man was he. And I'm leaving a few, as I say, a few extra strings open there to give it uh, a bit of sound, a bit of drone around, the, around that last line. I'll do that again. John Riley was a true love's name, an honest man was he. The lovely thing about playing those single notes there is that if you want to let the, the voice lead the song, you can with this arrangement. So you could go, John Riley was a true love's name. Or you could be much more regimented. John Riley was a true love's name. 
it doesn't really matter. You kind of, it's a great thing about sort of playing in this way because you can kind of feel like um, you allow the song a little bit to lead. You can feel the room, you can feel the audience, feel what you're feeling yourself and put the right amount of emotion in without having to rely too heavily on a pulse underneath. John Riley was a true love guy, an honest man was he. Got that? Now, going back to the intro, you've got some of the same things there. He's loved the farmer's daughter. Do you remember that bit with those sort of tensions in that? That's your bottom string, and that's your third string, first finger, fourth fret. But it's the same phrase. So he's. So I'm starting on the on the second string, fifth fret. First finger moves up to the fourth fret on the third string. So, uh, middle finger again moving up onto the fifth fret. You've got that open fourth string, and then move on the fourth string. You're going up from the fourth fret to the fifth fret. Um, and remember to leave that open bottom note in for that, that nice, lovely, tense chord. He's loved the farmer's daughter here as faithful as can be. I'm not sure that I need to take you through that little bit there because, again, it's from, those are very much from the intro. He's loved the farmer's daughter here as faithful as can be. You remember that nice minor chord? bit that I, that I talked about doing in the live situation. Throw it all in if you want to. He's loved the father's daughter here as faithful as can be. And again. A father he had riches but John Riley he was poor. Because she's loved this honest man he would not And, and what you'll have seen at that last bit is that it's repeating itself from that first phrase, which is why I haven't talked you through that. Do you remember that? We're back to the beginning of that phrase. So if I sing that, that uh, verse for you. John Riley was a true love's name, an honest man was he. He's loved the farmer's daughter, dear as faithful as can be. The farmer he had riches, but John Riley he was that lovely minor chord. Oh. And now I'm back to the beginning again. Because she's loved this honest man, he would not curse. Then I finish that off, taking it back to the beginning with one little phrase from the intro. And then you're into the second verse. So I'm going to take you through what we've got so far. Uh, I'll do uh, an intro, I'll do a verse up until the end of that bit, and then just ask me questions in the comments if you want, and we'll call it a day. Um, Good luck with it. It's a really lovely piece to play. Um, I'm really proud of this arrangement. Um, and it's one of those slightly annoying ones that every time I sit down and try to arrange something else, I'm just sort of like, it's got to be as lovely and uh, satisfying to play as John Riley, And it very rarely is. So anyway, here we go. Go. 
Cause she's loved this honest man He would not her enjoy <laughs> I knew I was gonna do that Because she's loved this honest man He would not her endure that helps please excuse the mess up at the very end um the songs uh, on the album up the cut so if you enjoyed the tutorial if you enjoyed the song that's where you can find it on bandcamp or spotify or any of those things cheers thanks very much